start with uh, maybe the obvious or the less obvious. Can everyone hear me okay? Uh, so middle mile aviation doesn't work. It simply doesn't. Uh, two weeks ago, my 16-year-old daughter who plays competitive volleyball, uh, their team got into uh, the national uh, approach games in Spokane, 220 miles away. And it was kind of a last minute thing. They got in, so we wanted to go and cheer her. Uh, and we went to kayak.com. And to go from here to Spokane and back on one of two major airlines that shall remain nameless, $545 per person, 220 miles. That is crazy. And you can quote me on that. Crazy. 220 miles. And that was for the five of us. So of course, we're not going to do that. Uh, so we ended up driving four and a half hours to Spokane and then four and a half hours back. A whole day's work wasted because $545 is simply unacceptable for the 200 mile drive. There are folks who live in Ellensburg. Who here has been to Ellensburg? Wonderful little town, 135 miles away. I'm assuming you guys flew here, right? 135 miles away, two and a half hours drive. There's three airfields around Ellensburg. No commercial aviation in or out. That's just wrong. It's all wrong. And why? Because it's expensive. Airlines have figured out that the bigger the plane, the more money they make because the cost per passenger goes down. But the bigger the plane, the bigger the airport you need to fill it, fill it up. Ellensburg is not a really big town. You can't fill a 100-person seat or a 100-person aircraft every day. Even Spokane is hard. My daughter and I, my eldest daughter, who's a senior, we're going to visit uh, Wazoo in a couple of weeks. She wants to be an engineer. And guess what? Tickets are about $600 return from here to Pullman. That's wrong. So we're going to drive for five hours to get to Pullman. And I know some folks here drove here five hours from Pullman. That's just wrong. Electric aviation is going to change that because we can reduce the cost of flying by 60 to 80 percent per hour. 60 to 80 percent. If we take a 100 mile flight on a 9, 10, 11 passenger aircraft, 100 miles, that aircraft is going to burn about $400 in fuel, plus minus, depends on the price of fuel at that day, et cetera. It'll only be 12 cents, or $12, excuse me, in electricity, assuming a 12 cent price tag. In Washington State, we're at about 7 cents price tag, unless you're in Moses Lake, and there it's 2 cents which means basically the flight will basically almost be free. So from that perspective, that's what drives us at MagniX to do electric aviation. It's not about the cool technology. It's not about going to electrification. It's not about the propulsion system. It's really about bringing back that connectivity between communities that has been lost. If you think back 100 years, what happened when railroads got into towns? Suddenly there was an economic boost, right? There was a way to connect people, and commerce. Then when the airlines started to come in and opened new hubs, same thing happened. But slowly but surely, that's going away. Rail here in the United States is pretty bad, as an understatement. And it's not going to solve things if you have to get to the San Juan Islands. Fast rail isn't going to help you. And the infrastructure required to put down new rail is very expensive and very tough. The United States already has more than 10,000 airports that can be utilized, over 10,000. Only about 600 are used by the major airlines. If you include charter, business aviation, private, you're at about 2,000 airlines. That still leaves more than 8,000 airports across the U.S., including the three at Ellensburg, that aren't used, that could be used, that could easily fill a 10, 15 passenger aircraft. So that's the future we're trying to go after. If you look at what happened just in terms of a, a little bit of data, 2005, here in the United States, about 45% of all flights were done by aircraft of 50 passengers or below. In 2018, that went down to about 20% and is getting worse. Airplanes are getting bigger, smaller airports are losing their connectivity or just not going to get it altogether. If you look at my drive to Spokane, it's a little longer, but a 300 mile car, uh, trip, 229 pounds of CO2 in that car, whether it's one person or five people. But if you go on a plane, that's 405 pounds of CO2 per passenger. 
So not only would I have to spend $545 to get to Spokane, I would be contributing a great 405 pounds of CO2. Electric aircraft, zero. In the United States, 12% of CO2 and greenhouse gases is from aviation, 12%. And we've all heard the various UN reports, et cetera, about how it's only gonna get worse with aviation. And worldwide, the environmental impacts are significant. So if we can do something to reduce that from that 12%, it's already a positive. So some might think electric aviation isn't really doable. There's plenty of naysayers out there. And believe me, I've heard it all. And I agree with everything that's being said. Batteries, there's not enough batteries for long range flight. I agree. We're not gonna be flying all electric Seattle to New York anytime soon. Definitely not New York to London. That'll take 40 years. But if you look at range, the question isn't, can it go as far as a fuel based aircraft? The question should be, with the range that's possible, is there anyone that would use it? Right now, that same 10 plus minus passenger aircraft with today's batteries, not batteries in two years from now, in today's batteries, can go about 120 miles. That's it. No Guinness Book of Records, nothing phenomenal, 120 miles for a 10 passenger aircraft. So would anyone who use it? Well, look at the data. In 2018, there were over 38 million scheduled airline flights worldwide, 38 million. 1.8 million, 5% of those worldwide flights were less than 100 miles in range. Now we're not talking about the Kenmore airs or the Harbor airs, they're not reported in here. We're also not talking about FedEx or DHL that have thousands of flights a day taking cargo, they're not reported in here. We're not talking about private aviation or charters the folks who can take a private plane or share a plane, they're not reported in here. This is just the standard airlines, the Alaskas, the Uniteds, et cetera. 5% of worldwide airline flights, less than 100 miles in range. So I would say there are probably quite a few people who could use a small electric aircraft that is limited by range. Two weeks ago, uh, we announced together with Harbor Air uh, out of British Columbia, Vancouver, British Columbia, they're gonna be the first all electric airline. And while people say it can't be done, their average flights are 15 to 20 minutes long. They fly from Vancouver to Victoria, Vancouver to Nanaimo, et cetera. 15, 20 minutes. So if you can do a 30 minute flight with an all battery, that's a perfect match. They take four, six, seven people, those 15, 20 minutes. It's a 10 passenger aircraft, perfect match. So it's really not about is electric as good as gas. It won't be you get 100 times more power density and fuel than you do batteries. But can it contribute to the economy and do something better, connect communities, allow for lower cost transport of people and goods? We say absolutely. So here's our vision as a company. It's really about increased prosperity by connecting communities. That's what it's about. We do it by electrifying aircraft. We want to have the folks in Ellensburg be able to get same day deliveries from Amazon, like I get in Redmond. Do you get that today? No, because Amazon's not gonna fly anything there, and they shouldn't, it's really expensive. And they're not gonna drive a truck every couple of hours either, because it's really expensive. But if flying an electric plane was cheaper than a truck, and you could do it in a 20 minute flight versus a two and a half hour drive, that may change the economics. That may make a company in Ellensburg be able to export their things out of Ellensburg into Seattle, to Spokane, grow their business. Grow their business, hire more people, et cetera, et cetera. So we're a team of about 60 people, and we've been able to gather the best minds in aerospace. I've been pleasantly surprised at the quality and caliber of people we're able to pull from the so-called giants of aerospace. Boeing, Airbus, Astronics, Liber, GE Aviation, all want to be part of something revolutionary making their mark on the world. So great, great team. And we're hiring, by the way. So how do we do it? Let's talk a little bit about the technology. So we have basically an all electric motor. It's a permanent magnet motor that has three key elements to it that make it really special. Uh, one is our design. I'm not talking about the beautiful, beautiful way it looks. That's not what I'm talking about. It's the internal design. 
the magnets, the coils, how we place them, how many we place, the way we place them, the, uh, the angles, etc. The second is the materials we use to make it really lightweight. And then the third is our integrated liquid cooling system. There's a lot of electric aircraft out there that are being designed uh, in the so-called air taxi model. Uh, these things that will apparently come here, land, take me to my office, and then take me back home, and do it in seconds without any traffic, and probably without a pilot too. That's a great Jetsons dream, and one day it will happen, 10, 15 years from now. But it will happen. So we're not part of that, we're part of the let's take 9, 10, 15 passengers in what I would define as the most boring part of aviation. A traditional aircraft with two wings that takes off from an airport and lands at an airport. But to do that, you need a lot more power than the distributed little motors that are on these air taxis. More power, more heat. More heat, you need cooling. Air cooling, if you're going with an aircraft like this at 12, 15,000 feet, you're probably all smart enough to know there's not enough air to cool the motor. So you need to have liquid cooling. But if you add the traditional way of liquid cooling a motor, that adds a lot of penalty in terms of weight. So then you take away the idea that it's a lightweight motor. So we've been able to figure out how to, integrated, how to have an integrated liquid cooling system that allows the motor, the motor to work still at high te temperatures, but provide the propulsion it needs. We have two motors that we're right now taking to market, the Magni 250 and the Magni 500. Let's talk about the Magni 500, because that's a really cool one. 751 horsepower, over 2,800 Newton meters of torque, and it only weighs 282 pounds, all in. That's cool. That is super cool. Yeah, that's cool. Super cool. <laughs> that thing is what's going to fly an eight-person beaver at Harbor Air. Yeah. It's going to fly a Cessna caravan with 10 people on board. And two of those will fly 18 people in a two engine aircraft. All 100 to 150 miles. Where the bulk of flights of those types of aircraft fly. Twin Otter. Maybe Twin Otter. Maybe King Air. Take any PT-6 operator. Pratt & Whitney Canada produces the best engine the world has seen for the middle mile aircraft for the caravans, the beavers, the otters, the twin otters, the king airs. PT-6, that's our Magni 500 compared to a PT-6. Third of the size, third of the weight, same power. But guess what, for all you engineers out there, you know that an electric motor provides immediate torque. Immediate. If you look at the torque charts, you don't have to rev up, ramp up, speed up to get that torque, even at low RPMs. You also know that an electric motor isn't impacted by the density of air at altitude. So while on the PT-6, I have to put more fuel in and create more emissions to get the same level of power at 25,000 feet as I do at 500 feet, with an electric motor, it's exactly the same. Sea level or 25,000 feet, you'll get the same torque, the same power, you with the same energy. So from an efficiency perspective, it's phenomenal. You can take off faster, you can climb to altitude faster. So the efficiencies are significant. Where a PT-6 is about 30% efficient motor, ours is a little over 95% efficiency. Very, very little waste. The waste is heat that's cooled. So that's kind of all I have to say. I want to open it up to questions. But it's really, again, about creating a new era of transportation for the sake of connecting communities. So I'd love to answer any questions or arguments.